Okay, guys, here we have uh, the next speaker. Um, a very, uh, very informative presentation from Kalei Hakinen uh, from the game Refinery, the biggest mobile game feature trends coming your way in 2022. Please, Kalei, the stage is yours. All right, thank you, uh, Alex. Um, yes, so we'll be discussing today about um, some of the biggest things that are going on in the mobile game market right now in 2022. And before we get into the actual topic, I was thinking um, I could maybe give you a little bit of a self um, introduction. So yes, my name is Kala Heikinen and I work at Game Refinery where we provide uh, feature level data um, to different stakeholders in the, in the in the gaming industry, um, giving you information on what's what's uh, what's trending and what's not. Um, I work here as a senior analyst. Been working uh, here for six years already. Um, so I have um, followed um, quite a lot of uh, sort of like uh, things going up and and down in the industry in the past couple of years. Um, I was thinking that uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them to the chat. Um, I thought I tried to reserve some time in the end to um, to answer any questions uh, you might have. So I think that would be nice. But I think without further ado, um, we can then start um, the presentation. So um, I divided in th this presentation into a couple of different uh, sections. I was thinking the first. First, we could take a look at some of the biggest trends we have, we have uh, in event design. In the first section, I'm going to focus on some of the um, biggest meta uh, event design elements that we are we have uh, sort of like identified as trending. Um, continuing on the event design track, um, I want to also highlight some um, some notions on. Um, exciting core gameplays that we're seeing in events. And then uh, Battle Pass, I know it's not a sort of like a new uh, thing anymore in 2022, uh, but it's still notable how strong it is and how it's sort of like getting into genre. Basically, like no matter the genre you have, it's possible to have a Battle Pass system nowadays. So um that's been very interesting and the other aspect that's been interesting is to see these all different types of new exciting innovative implementations um that have appeared to games that take leverage on the sort of basic formula of the battle pass and then take it to the next level as to say so we'll discuss that um i also want to touch upon some iap offer trends and then lastly if we have time I want to discuss gotchas as well. Uh, again, just discuss some of the interesting, um, fresh implementations that we're seeing in the market in terms of gotchas. But let's start with the events and with the sort of like meta events. And here I want to, oh yeah. So um, like we all know, there are different, <laughs> like if someone says events, that can mean a million different things, right? So you can, it might mean these like one-off, unique, non-recurring events. Maybe it means these more of like season-based recurring um, events that you have going on all the time in the games. Maybe there are seasonal events that are that someone is discussing, meaning like Halloween, Singles Day, Oktoberfest, and so on. So the meaning of events and the meaning of live ops is nowadays very, very sort of like enlarged. And the umbrella is very big under under which all of these different uh, event types fall under. But in this presentation and in this section, I want to focus on these so-called meta events. And to be even more specific, I want to focus on renovation uh, events because they have just been so sort of like uh, so popular now, um, recently and, and and their popularity has, has really like exploded so so let's start with the sort of like defining uh, renovation events what we mean by uh, this is that if you've ever played homescapes gardenscapes or merge mansion uh, you know the 
renovation layer that is sort of like behind the uh, core gameplay sequences. So you have that. You combine that with uh, limited time live event uh, environment, and then you monetize it. Uh, usually by you have a, some some sort of special currency or ingredient items or some sort of limited time event common economy uh, built around that, where the players have to use this certain currency uh, to be able to make progress in the renovation event. And you can obviously monetize that in, in various different ways, uh, have enticing limited time uh, offers or, uh, or bundles uh, for players to get that uh, specific currency uh, and so on. That's the basic idea. Um, here's one example to give you more concrete feel uh, into it. So uh, phase 10, um, which is a, a very popular, um, you know, like um, PVP card game, um, casual card game uh, in the US market. Uh, it's had these renovation events, these looping events. Uh, during Halloween, for example, they had a Halloween themed renovation uh, event. And the idea was that um, you engage with the game uh, and through that um, you could gain items that you could then use to build up and renovate this so-called Halloween land. And the more you engage with the event, the more complete the Halloween land became. And for phase 10, this was a really successful event, as you can see from the graphs here. Um, and what maybe you're wondering that why, uh, like what, what are the reasons behind, uh, getting into this, why to add these renovation type events? Um, well, renovation events sort of like they have, they combine multiple different meta elements and through that, that helps them to keep them engaging so oftentimes they have collection elements they can have narrative elements they have, can they can have visual progression elements implemented uh in them and also in addition to that the sort of like fundamental core idea of cleaning things up getting things done tidying up things for a certain player segment that can be a very powerful motivator and it works very well with limited time uh, format and the framework can be looped back to the game with just different um, type of theming. And that's something that we see a lot in the top crossing games, actually. And one additional reason uh, is related to player motivation. So uh, some of the top casual player motivations, such as uh, completing milestones and customization and decoration, happen to be some of the most important elements in renovation uh, uh, renovation events. So if you have a casual game, you're thinking about how to enforce the player motivations that that um, entice your players to come, come to your game. Um, these are some of the top motivators and motivational factors, and they are very much present in renovation events. Um, all right, enough about renovation events. Um, I also want to highlight one other um, aspect, which is collection uh, elements. Especially casino games uh, are utilized this event meta layer um, to great extent. So it's not rare to see these sort of like collection albums where players have to, during a specific time frame, um, collect various kinds of uh, collectible pieces to a collection album. And by fulfilling that, they are then um, rewarded. And here's just one graph to highlight the rising popularity that we've seen with the feature uh, collection album uh, inside Casino. So uh, that has been a very trending thing with the top uh, Casino games. All right, I think we're ready to move on to um, the core gameplay experimentations that we also see in event uh, design. I think the most sort of like prevalent example of this is Play Rich's games as like 
to, to have, just have to name one. Maybe that could be Fishdom, where various kinds of uh, mini games that have nothing, absolutely nothing to do with the default match tree core gameplay, which Fishdom is all about, um, are very much present. So um, the rhythm, the pacing of the game is oftentimes that you play these match tree levels and then from time to time, players are encouraged to engage with these mini games that sort of like break the pattern of just grinding match three, match three levels. So that gives the players a very exciting, the feeling of uh, excitement, feeling of freshness when they can do something um, very different than the default uh, core gameplay. And Playrix is a very good example of a developer who's then able to circulate these mini games across their game portfolio. So a mini game that might appear in Fishdom might appear in a different Playrix game uh, the next week. Another example of a game mode that has nothing to do with the, uh, the basic default core gameplay is AFK Arena. It has this special playing mode um, that utilizes match tree gameplay. AFK Arena, obviously, if there's someone who doesn't know what kind of game this is, this is an idle RPG, so very mid-core game, um, very heavy on its systems. Um, but yes, it has a match tree gameplay um, mode uh, in the game as well, which, again, is able to provide something very different to the players that they might expect uh, from the normal uh, gameplay of uh, AFK Arena. I find this very, very uh, interesting to see in a game like this. Now, why um, more and more games are now trying to sort of like hybridize their core gameplay palette, have different kinds of elements there, various different types of uh, reasons. Um, as I already mentioned, it adds this sense of uh, surprise, excitement to the players. It can be really helpful. There's very great synergies with event format as you can experiment with different kinds of things. If something doesn't work, just move on to the next experiment you have in the pipeline. Uh, and as I said, you can recycle these, these mini games across your portfolio. If you have something working in your game X, have a think, could it work in game Y as well? And you can utilize various kinds of different additional uh, game features in these events as well. If you want to monetize its uh, session lengths, you can add energy system. If you want to have competitive aspects in the events, use leaderboards and so on. All right, I think we can then move on to Battle Pass. Um, battle Pass remains strong. Yes, I do agree. And we have new um, implementations of it appearing all the time. Very exciting. Um, yes. So, as I mentioned, heavily, heavily trending. I know it's not, you know, the like we. Th this has been news for several years already, but just to highlight it again, like um, 2018, for example, all of practically no top crossing mobile game was using metal passes or season passes, and nowadays the utilization rate is just done up very different level. Nowadays, we have more than, you know, 60% of the top one crossing games in the US, for example, utilizing a, some form of battle pass. And it's also trending no matter the genre, basically, no matter the core gameplay uh, mechanic, we see it. We see it trending in mastery games. We see it trending just overall in reaction naming based games. Um, so it's not like it's just something that can be used in a one specific genre. And here's just one more uh, slide to illustrate that. So these are all um, genres that are currently utilizing Battle Pass. So they range from action RPGs to idlers to from poker and cards to, to arcade sports. So um, very, very um, trending. And I would, like, as if I were a game developer, I would think that, especially if I'm operating in a genre uh, where I have lacked 
sort of like long-term progression goals traditionally, I would perhaps try to think that would this be something that could e somewhat easily give me a remedy to, to that pro problem. So create these uh, more long-lasting, more long-term goals that my player can engage with and, uh, and receive a feel of progression. But yes, I promised some imp uh, interesting implementations. So uh, here's one, Dragon Ball Legends, uh, which is a very popular uh, fighting game, uh, for example, in the US market, but in other markets as well. It has multiple different difficulty layers to its battle pass system. So players uh, can decide themselves that how difficult they want the battle pass plan to be, the more difficult it is, um, the better the rewards, but then an easier plan. If you're not, you know, if you're not, if you know that you're not engaging with the game as heavily as some hardcore players, then maybe an easier plan might be more suitable for you as you have better chances of actually completing the plan. So this was really, really interesting um, approach to sort of like um, segment the, the uh, battle pass engagement to different players. Then cooperative battle passes. Uh, there are multiple examples, but Top War is uh, one title that utilizes this. Um, the twist is that you accumulate progression in this battle pass system together with your clan, mate, clan mates. So um, oftentimes it's not enough if you're the only one um, who, you know, is com is contributing to the completion of the battle pass. Instead, what you usually need is that the other guildmates help you to do that. Um, that way you can do it as efficiently as possible. All right, let's move on to discuss IAP offers uh, that I firmly think that are getting more varied. Um, have been getting more varied and are getting in more right in the future as well. I firmly believe that. Um, <clears throat> so as we all know, when you are creating an IAP offer, there are several different elements that you can throw in. You can make put something exclusive um, to the offer, make it so that this is the only way that I can get something, a um, particular asset, for example. Maybe you want to have a surprise element. Maybe the surprise is that you give it for a very um, attractive, you, you give it a very attractive price point that will surprise your players. Urgency is, is good and almost always utilized, obviously. Uh, so like make your players feel that you have to do it now or in a very limited time frame. And if not, um, you know, yeah, the player will miss the chance. Social uh, is maybe a bit more rare, perhaps, but we see this as well. So you um, cooperatively, if everyone uh, invests uh, in this, if enough players, for example, do something, a certain kind of tasks, then you can get this uh, uh, this certain, let's say, character for a very uh, discounted price, for example. Uh, and progression. So um, if you just keep on uh, making purchases, so you, oftentimes you have this progression bar. If you keep on making, for example, uh, let's say uh, premium currency top ups, once you do them enough, then you can get something maybe as a, even, a, even for free, but also give you something in a, with a very hefty uh, discount. And then, of course, targeting personalization. So um, trying to find ways to um, make the offer as compelling as possible to that particular pay player. And if you're wondering that how much limited time IAP offers in general are just utilized, well, uh, I, I guess this is not very surprising, but all of the top crossing games use some sort of like limited time offers to, to present their, uh, to the players. Again, a couple of examples to throw uh, at you guys. Um, one from Homescape. So 
they have had these progressive offers. The idea being that if the players um, purchase multiple um, different bundles, um, they get to they get an additional reward or get to, for example, buy uh, an additional, uh, additional offer for a very attractive uh, price point. But I think in case of Homescapes, this was, uh, this was just an um, additional reward. So, so the more you purchase this uh, IAP offers, um, then you get uh, rewarded with a special, um, special reward. Uh, then we have Pixelgun uh, 3D, which has had this targeted offer. So in Pixelgun 3D, um, one of the most important monetization um, points in this game uh, are the guns. Uh, and the guns, if you want them, you have to use the specific weapon parts. You get this from limited time events and event gotchas and so on. But if you're a non-paying player, you'll never have enough to craft these guns. So you have loads of these unfinished exclusive weapons. Um, but what they do is that they give players the chance to get the remaining parts that they're missing with targeted uh, limited time IAP uh, offers. So if they if they opt for these uh, offers, they can get um, the parts that they're missing. And um, that has been very uh, powerful monetization tool for the game. And then one more, I have one, this is from Dragon City Mobile. They have limited quantity offers. So what this means is that they signal the players that, okay, <clears throat> we are only going to sell thousand units with this price of this item, like in this example here. And you can see how many have already been purchased, how many are still left to be purchased. Um, so this is all, all again, giving a sort of like First of all, giving a sense of urgency to players that, hey, you have to act at like, if not now, then pr preferably soon to get this item. And also signaling that um, there is demand for this item. Other people, other players are, are purchasing this. Should I be also be interested in this item? So um, in multiple different ways, gifts, um, interesting and um, compelling um, signals to the players to engage with the offer. All right, I think we do have um, time for a um, little gotcha um, briefing or like an update. So obviously like, especially in Japan, gotchas have been evolving a lot in the, in the, in the, in the last years. It's, it's, it's not just that you have the regular you know, gacha mechanic where you make a pool and then you get a random item for a gacha pool. But instead, what we in Japan have had all for a long time, and also in 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 in, in some Western games. Uh, I'm not saying that we have not had in the West, but especially in Japan, we've had special mechanics like a box gacha where you have the prize pool, and then one by one, uh, when you pull the gacha, items are removed from the from the pool, so that in the end. Uh, you'll if you just keep on pulling, you will get all the items from the box. Um, then there is, for example, uh, step up gotchas, uh, where the more pulls you make, the better your chances are to get um, a more rare item from the gacha pool. And then we have, for example, BD gotchas, where uh, or BD gacha sort of like a mechanic where you are guaranteed a certain a price of a certain rarity if you just keep on pulling um, the gacha. And then there are, for example, the so-called Sugarogo gachas where you throw this dice and then you move on a dice board and then you get all the rewards on that um, linear pool. But um, what we've been sort of like thinking about, like will, are we gonna see this in mobile as well? Uh, our preview gotcha. So um, some of you might remember that FIFA has been experimenting uh, with this in their, I think was in the, in the ultimate team system. So while in regular gotcha, you pay something, you pull the gotcha and then you get 
a randomized reward in preview gachas, you first pull, uh, pull the gacha, then you get to see what the rewards are, and then you make the decision that do you purchase these rewards or not. Um, so that's been a really interesting mechanic, and uh, we've been, been like been really eagerly waiting that do we see that in the mobile game market as well. This war for um, at least we have not seen many examples of this, uh, but yeah, as I mentioned, the uh, the uh, FIFA FIFA Ultimate Team has this, so there you get to preview the the items that you would get from the from the gacha game uh, from the gacha. And then you make the decision whether you whether you go for it or not. Um, and then just another example of a, a new gacha implementation is uh, Kotoroman uh, from Japan. So they had this uh, co-op gacha. So players engage with this gacha not alone, but with a team of other players and. Uh, and uh, when you do, when you roll this gacha, all the members of the of the team, like five people, for example, get to select one uh, item from the from the gacha pool, and then after the gacha is rolled, then everyone gets the uh, gets the rewards that everyone has selected. All right, um, I think we are now reaching the end. So just some conclusions um, in terms of um, event design. Meta elements are getting more and more trending, and also also would uh, like to highlight the different types of core gameplay experimentations that we're seeing. Uh, having these mini games uh, that have nothing to do with the default gameplay is something that we see a lot nowadays. Battle Pass um, <clears throat> is still trending and is still remaining strong. Um, I would watch out innovate innovations in this strong front, but also um, uh, in in gacha mechanics as well. And as we mentioned, in our IAP offers are getting more and more innovative, and uh, we see a lot different implementations uh, when it comes to IAP offers as well. With that, um, I just want to say thank you for uh, taking part. Um, to this uh, presentation and the conference uh, overall. I hope you've had a very, very nice event. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, now is the time to ask. Kale, thank you so much for uh, that interesting uh, presentation and so many insights. Uh, the work you've done uh, to present all those numbers is just tremendous. Thank you so much. We have some questions uh, from, I believe we have time for just one um, from uh, the viewers, um, and um, here it is. Is it easy to implement the Battle Pass feature in Unity? Um, if you know uh, how to do that, could you please comment? You mean it with the Unity software? Probably. OK, uh, well, I have to say that I, I there's very limited um, info that or stuff that I can say to that. Um, so unfortunately, maybe someone who is more experienced with uh, Unity development would be the best person to answer this uh, this question. So yeah, of unfortunately, I have to say, to put it simply, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, then uh, another one. Uh, can you mention some trends coming in 2022 on the hyper casual market? Hyper casual market. OK, OK. Um, well, I think the biggest trend is definitely that a lot of hyper-casual developers are eyeing to the casual market. So seeking out ways to increase their retention, um, finding different ways to do that through meta elements, through progression elements, through social elements. Um, so yes, you probably everyone has heard the term hybrid casual. So, so finding ways to go beyond the ad monetization to also have IP monetization in the game. And obviously, if you want to have that, uh, you most likely need to have um, better retention that you typically have in hyper casual uh, games. And to do that, then you oftentimes utilize progression mechanics, social elements, and so on. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And of course, um, probably the uh, the quick but not the simple question, 
uh, uh, who's uh, everyone he want, wondering about uh, the future of uh, hyper casual uh, games market? How long is it? Uh, so we've we see now uh, some forks appear from uh, hyper casual games to um, to other uh, uh, games and uh, other segments of the market are uh, also developing. So how long will it last uh, the hyper casual uh, games market? What do you see from? Well, I would I would say that the hyper casual market as will evolve. It will evolve. So I don't see any. I don't like. I'm not. I'm not seeing a, a sort of a like a death to to hyper casual. But I do think that a lot of hyper casual, if not the games themselves uh, that are currently in the market, but but definitely the developers that are in the hyper casual space are thinking about ways to evolve their games to also experiment with other types of monetization. So this takes me back to the previous question. So, so how to make the games, at least some of these games, more long lasting and utilize a more diverse source of, uh, of revenue. So not just rely on IAA, but also to rely on, to have a more um, varied revenue, revenue streams also coming from the IAP side. So. So uh, I would stay positive and just I would th think it from the view that um, it will evolve and uh, develop. Thank you. Thank you so much. So guys, dive uh, dive into the market deeper, create more games. The future is bright. This is what numbers say. And game refiner experts in numbers and predictions and analysis tell you that. Thank you, Kali, so much. Uh, stay on the platform. I believe you probably get more questions in chat. And thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Have a nice Peace. day. Bye.